Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for being here today. Let's just wait another minute. I'm waiting for one of my colleagues and then waiting for a few more people to join the room, as usual. Um, and let me know in the chat where you are tuning in from. Always curious about that. Um, I'm Kat. I'm here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and yeah, just drop in the chat where you're tuning in from if you want to let me know where you are this lovely fall day. Um, and then I don't know, let, what's your uh, what's been your favorite dish that you've made this month with wildcat seafood? If you have cooked anything, um, I think for me, what did I make that was really good the other day? I did like um, like a curry powder seared fish thing that was really easy and really delicious and just like had it with a nice salad and some rice um I'm a big fan of curry powder it just makes everything really easy um hello Teresa and Christine um oh hello Irving welcome back again um we're just gonna wait another couple of minutes here and 303 my time is when we usually start so um hi William Ooh, Japanese eggplant with salmon. Um, was that one of our recipes? We have one that's kind of like that, that I, I forget if it has like a miso glaze type of thing, Kathleen, but um, that sounds really nice. So, <laughs> oh yeah, scallops. I will never disagree with scallops being a favorite. Um, I have some lined up next week for the holidays as like an appetizer for my family. So I don't think I've made it for them before, but they're going to be shocked, just shocked, um, hopefully like in a good way. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's wait one more minute. I don't know if my colleague is here yet. Um, let me just rearrange some things in my screen here. Um, well, you know what, I'm getting antsy and let's just go ahead and get started. Don't ask any hard questions yet because we don't have backup. So um, anyway, hello, uh, I'm Kat. I'm part of the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Some of you have may been, some of you may have been at a live event before. For those of you who haven't, welcome. Um, today, I am going to be making a quick, easy, ridiculously flavorful recipe with baked whitefish. Baked whitefish sounds so boring, and yet it's the easiest thing to make, and this is absolutely not boring. It's cooked and served with one of my favorite homemade sauces, um, something called chermoula. So if you don't know what chermoula is yet, you're in for a real treat. I'm especially excited to share this recipe today because it features a brand new species that we are adding to our roster of wild-caught fish as a member special. Um, it's a fish called yellow eye. So it's yellow eye rockfish is the full name, but commonly known as yellow eye. Um, so kind of like brings James Bond golden eye vibes, but yellow eye rockfish. Anyway, before we get to the recipe, um, just some housekeeping. As usual, if you want to follow along with captions there, you have the option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. There should be a button that says captions, or it might be hidden in the more menu that has three dots. Um, if you have any questions along the way during the event, um, go ahead and drop those into the Q&A button. It'll help us find the questions more easily than if you put them into the chat, but feel free to chat amongst yourselves about whatever you need to, and we'll also be looking there too. So um, lastly, if you need to leave the event before it is over, um, I think this one might take like 40 minutes or so. I don't know, it depends on how long I talk and how many questions you have. Um, we'll send a link today um, today or tomorrow in your inbox um, with the recording. Uh, the event will also be immediately available right afterwards on Facebook because we are live streaming from Facebook. So if you're joining us there, hello. Um, so there's a link in the chat for that if you just wanna scope out our Facebook page if you haven't been there yet. So um, I'm joined today by at least one of my teammates if the other one is here, uh, we'll see. Um, reach out to them if you have any questions about anything, if they want to come on screen to say hi, you'll see their little heads pop up at the top here. Hello, Sunana, and maybe Carl, maybe not Carl. Well, Carl will, will be here eventually. Oh, there's Carl. 
Hey. Um, so these are the friends and colleagues that I'm going to be um, working with today. They'll answer any of your questions um, and help field things to me. So don't hesitate to reach out to them now or later, after, tomorrow, whenever. Um, they're going to be essential if you're traveling during the holidays and want to reschedule your box. Um, I will be traveling during the holidays. I'll be at my mom's place next week. So they rescheduled my delivery for me. It's arriving um, in Kansas and not New York. So it's as easy as that. Just reach out to them. Anyway, let's talk food. So what we're making today, uh, we're baking a few fillets of whitefish and serving it with chermoula. It's an herby spiced not necessarily spicy, but an early, early herby and spiced North African condiment. Um, I first had chermoula at a Moroccan restaurant in my neighborhood. Um, and it's just one of those things that you taste that completely changes the course of your life. I'd never heard of chermoula before. Um, so, you know, right after that, I got online, Googled some things, and now it's one of my mainstays uh, when I'm at home for vegetables, fish, kind of whatever. Um, the recipe that we're using today is our own simple version of chermoula. There's a lot of different kinds out there, but it's made with fresh herbs, just basically parsley, cilantro, and then mixed in with some pantry staple spices. So cumin, coriander, um, paprika. I'm using smoked paprika. That might not be something you have in your cabinet, but you should because it's delicious. Um, regular paprika is fine though. Um, plus some lemon and garlic just to give it a little more of that. A punch. So that all sounds very easy, right? All those ingredients are very familiar to us. Tremula may not be, but after today it will be. So um, I really like this with a hearty white fish. It's an amazing combination. Um, you can cook the fish anyway. I think baked is just super simple for a weeknight. Um, you know, you just put it on the pan, set it, and almost forget it. Don't forget it too long because the fish will overcook, but you know, put it in the oven and then you're done. So um, I first served it with Pacific halibut since that's what I usually have in my freezer. But um, today I'm making it with our current member special, yellow eye rockfish. Um, I think it's gonna be a really good pairing. I haven't done this yet, but I can kind of like already taste what it's gonna taste like in my mind. So let me show you what yellowfish rockfish looks like. Um, this is yellow eye rockfish. This is one filet. I have another one that's like a slightly different shape. Um, a little chunkier, a little more like, this one almost looks like cod with some of the striping. Um, if you have rockfish in your box or have had rockfish in your box in the past, this probably looks more familiar. Um, rockfish tends to have a couple different stripes down one of the sides and this looks like the tail end of it. So this is a large species of rockfish. Much, lar much larger than the rockfish that you would get in a wild combo box or a wild whitefish box. Um, beyond the difference in size, they're so different in flavor. So this is, if you're, if you're not familiar with rockfish, let me grab what we commonly know as rockfish is this smaller guy. You usually get a few pieces in every pack. Um, and yeah, like I said, this looks kind of like it, but just like the giant big daddy version. So um, anyway, yellow eye is a type of rockfish. They actually share the same genus, if we want to get a little scientific with this. Um, I really had expected yellow eye to be just a bigger version of rockfish that I typically, you know, have in my freezer that I get in my box. Um, but just because a fish shares the same genus as another fish doesn't mean that it's going to have the same culinary qualities. Um, just as an example, um, rainbow trout and sockeye salmon, they share the same genus, but they are very different fish. So this is one of those situations where same genus, different fish altogether. Um, yellow eye rockfish is its own fish entirely. It's very mild, mild white fish, unlike this other rockfish, which is a very bold, robust flavor that I know is polarizing. I'm obsessed with it, but this is super, super mild. Um, it reminds me a little bit of lingcod, which is another member special that we have, depending on what we get in. Um, but it's not quite as delicate as lingcod. Um, it's a little hardier, so I've really enjoyed using it in place of Pacific halibut. It's sturdy enough to hold up to the same cooking methods. Um, 
And I think it's just a really fantastic fish to pair with sauces because um, it's not too precious, you know. So um, I tend to treat Pacific halibut a little more like it's something precious. Like I don't want to mess it up or cover up the flavor. But with yellow, yellow eye, I can kind of just do my thing and it's going to be delicious. So um, if you're like me and love trying out a new species, definitely consider adding yellow eye to your next box. Um, I can give you all these adjectives and comparisons and scientific explanations, but you know, the best way to get to know a fish is, of course, just to try it yourself, eat it, taste it, cook it. Um, the one, this one was truly a surprise for me, um, and I'm glad that I still have a few fillets left in my freezer. Um, but um, anyway, there should be a link in the chat if you want to scope out the member special, exclusive to members. So if you're not a member, you have to sign up to get um, the special deal. So um Let's get to the cooking part. So we're gonna make baked jello eye with a really easy chermoula sauce. If you don't know how to spell chermoula, I'm just gonna drop that into the chat here because um, you know a lot of my colleagues don't even know how to spell it, but there it is, chermoula. That's how we spell it um, in English anyway. So um, the ingredient list, uh, Sanan is gonna drop that into the chat. Um, like I said, pretty basic ingredient list. You probably have a lot of the spices in your cabinet now. You might need to go get some cilantro and parsley at the store. But the good thing is you can use pretty much a bunch of cilantro and a bunch of parsley to make this. So you're not going to, you know, end up making something with like a few leaves and then having the rest of the herbs like rot in your fridge. You know, this is one of those things where you get to use all of it. Um, so what I've done already, I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. Um, so that's going to be nice and hot and ready to go. Um, I'm going to combine all of my ingredients other than the fish in a food processor. Um, if you don't mind switching over cameras for me, Sonana, that would be great. Um, if you don't have a food processor, processor, that's totally okay. You can always mince things by hand, but um, since I have a little mini one, I'm just going to go ahead and use this today. So um, into this, I'm going to add some crushed garlic. Maybe I'll chop it up a little bit just so I don't have these things flying around in the blades. Um, usually use like three or four cloves, depending on how big these are. Um, I have a mix of coriander, cumin, already ground, and some chili flake. So that's gonna go in here too. Um, I have smoked paprika. So smoked paprika has a really smoky flavor, um, hence smoked paprika. And it is just like so intense and delicious. Um, it's a little bit different than, well, very different than like a regular paprika. But like I said, if you don't have smoked, don't worry. You'll have a similar sort of flavor profile from something like a Hungarian sweet paprika. Um, so I've got a bunch of cilantro here. I'll just give this a rough chop and nestle that in here. And then parsley, let's see. I'm making kind of a mini batch today for a couple fillets. This is probably enough. Um, cilantro, I don't mind throwing in the tender stems, but you know, when you're using parsley, some of these can get really tough. So I try to Go ahead and peel those off of the leaves or peel the leaves off of them, that is. So let's start with this and I'll add more once I have a little more room in here. Um, to this, I'm gonna also add some lemon juice, just some fresh squeezed lemon um, and then olive oil. And then we'll go ahead and blitz this up into um, basically what will look kind of like a pesto or chimichurri. All right, we can always add some more lemon in a bit and give that a taste. Um, so let's do a quarter cup of olive oil. Quarter cup is four tablespoons. I, for some reason, lost my quarter cup measurement many, many years ago and have lived to tell the tale by using my tablespoon measurement here. So let's go ahead and... Yep. That's smelling really good already. Um, let me add in a little more parsley because this is broken down some more now. So what we're gonna do with this 
Um, this is going to be a sauce for before the fish cooks and after the fish cooks. Um, so we're actually gonna slather this onto the fillets before we put them into the oven. Um, and that's gonna create a really, really moist, delicious fish. That's probably good enough there. I don't mind if there's a couple big leaves in there. So um, like I said, you don't need a food processor for this. You can kind of chop up the, the uh, harder ingredients and whisk them together with the rest. So let's go ahead and transfer this into a little bowl. Um, I don't know, maybe like drop in the chat, have you had Charmula before? Do you know what this is? Um, I'm very curious to know how many of you have had this in the past. All right, so we got a nice, delicious looking paste here for the fish. So next thing we're going to do is, um, I showed you the fish earlier, but what I did was patted them dry. So they're nice and dry and ready for my sauce. Um, I'm going to season this up just a little bit. I haven't added any salt and pepper to this yet, actually. So let me give it the taste. Yeah, that needs some seasoning. Maybe like half a teaspoon. It's all to taste here. You know, if you want it to be a little more lemony, add in some more lemon, a little more salt, etc. Do your thing. Yeah, that's better. All right, a little salt and pepper on the fish. Remember, this already has some seasoning in it, so don't go overboard with the fish. Um, let me grab my sheet pan. I have a sheet pan in the oven already, actually, because I thought, you know, why not add some sweet potatoes to this? Um, so those are just, they've gotten a little bit of a head start. This isn't part of the recipe, but it's always something that you can do when you're making something on a sheet pan. You know, throw some veggies on it, get some stuff cooking, and then you got like a nice meal going. Um, let's see, just shove these guys over here. Make room for my fish. Let's put this one here. So these fillets are a little bit different in size. This one's, I'd say substantially thicker than this. Um, so I might expect to take this one out a little bit sooner, the one that I'm seasoning up right now than the thicker one, but we'll we'll see when we get there. Um, I also was defrosting this in my fridge and this one seems like it might be a little frozen in the center still. Sometimes it just takes forever for it to defrost, but that's okay. It's still gonna cook up really nicely. So there we go. That's gonna go into the oven for, let's do eight minutes. Just keep an eye on the clock here. 318, my time. All right, so I will check this at 326. Um, okay, so anyone have any questions about anything yet? If you want to switch over to the other camera, I'm not doing anything right here, just looking at a mess. <laughs> um, the only question as of right now, Kat, is what should the oven temperature be at? 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's a little, you know, 375 is fine too. You'll just have to do a longer cook time. But um, I like I like cooking fish, white fish at 400 because it tends to be able to stand up to the heat a little bit better than um, a lean wild salmon, like sockeye, coho. Uh, when they're a little lean, they tend to dry out pretty quickly. Um, with the white fish, I, I don't have as much of a problem. So I just like to get things going unless I'm doing something like a slow roast. So that's my long answer. It's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I see a question. You usually cover the fish in foil. I mean, I I never do for some reason. I Unless it's a specific part of the recipe, um, I tend to like keeping the air flowing around it, um, especially if I'm doing something where there's potential to caramelize anything. Um, but there's no problem or issue with covering it in foil. You're just gonna, depending on the recipe, like inhibit any sort of like browning from happening. Um, with something like this, you would be more than welcome to put foil on it, but um, there's not really a need to. So um, I'll say like 
this will just segue into my next little thing I wanted to talk about here. Um, while we're waiting for the fish to cook, let's talk technique. So there are two reasons I really like baking whitefish with a heap of sauce right on top. So number one, the fish takes on a lot of flavor as it cooks. Um, you don't need to spend any time marinating the fish beforehand because all of that like flavoring action is happening while it's in the oven cooking. So, you know, it's just super efficient, two for one. So um, the sauce on top techniques works really well with a mild white fish when you wanna add a little more flavor to the overall dish. Um, the second reason to bake white fish with a spoonful of sauce right on top is it basically keeps the fish under like a yummy blanket. So instead of needing something like tin foil to keep the fish moist and like steamed in there, um, you're just using like an herb blanket to keep the fish really tender. So um, that's a really good way to keep fish from drying out. Um, it's a really good technique when you have fillets that are such different sizes because it kind of acts as a buffer um, between like a thinner fillet and a thicker fillet, you know, like I have two that are very different thicknesses in the oven right now. So, um, you know, it's possible that they'll be done around the same time. Maybe I might need to let the thicker one cook a little bit more, but, um, but the herb blanket helps. So this is a technique you can use for any wild caught fish, any white fish, um, Pacific halibut, Pacific cod, yellow eye, et cetera. Um, but it also works really nicely with wild salmon. So coho, sockeye and, and whatnot, basically any fish or anything that you put underneath herbs, it'll just stay nice and tender. So um, maybe a little bit more about uh, chermoula. Like, I don't know if any of you said that you have had it. No, no. One. Oh, someone says, someone said you've never had it. Two people have said you've never had chermoula. So um, it happens to be a really, really delicious condiment um, that you can spoon over roasted vegetables, um, like a bowl of couscous. I actually meant to make couscous, but just totally forgot until looking at my notes here. Um, you can use it as a dip for pita. Um, it's just very, very multi-purpose. So if you don't use all of it on the fish, you know, I still have a considerable amount left here. I don't know. I might need to add more to it. I might not. It just kind of depends. Oh, actually, I'll just use this to put on the sweet potatoes. So, um, you know, if you have any left over, what you can do is just stash it in the fridge for another day or use it on anything you can imagine. Once you taste it, you'll kind of see what you think will go well with it, what you think won't go well with it. Um, if you want to make chermoula extra, extra flavorful, um, the right way to have done this would have been to use used whole dry spices like coriander seed, cumin seed, toast those up in a pan, and then use a spice grinder or something like a mortar and pestle that really brings out these like rich warm flavors that give this like a very characteristically Moroccan North African flavor. Um, but you know, this is the easy way to do it with ground spices when you're just cooking on a weeknight and you just want something to be done in under 20 minutes, ground spices are totally fine. They do lack the nuance that whole spices do, but you know, I I'll do that if I feel like it and if I have time. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm very happy with what this sauce tastes like right now. So, um, I don't know if I said this already, if you are storing any leftover sauce, um, you know, what I made today was probably enough for four fillets, um, rather than two, um, just try to use it within three days to get the best flavor out of it. After three days, it, it probably isn't going to be bad. There's nothing in here that's that perishable. Um, but the greens of the herb might start to oxidize a little bit and look a little like ruddy. So not as pretty. Um, just give it like a fresh squeeze of lemon juice to revive it um, before serving. So um, that's, that's sort of my recommendations with this sauce. Um, I have a few more minutes before the fish is cooked. Um, anyone have any questions about anything, any questions about yellow eye um, or, you know, anything else about life in general? There is one question on yellow eye. How, what's the best way you recommend cooking it so that it is very soft and flaky versus coming out overcooked? Um, so it cooks very much like, um, like Pacific halibut. Um, but I think you have a little bit more wiggle room. If you ever ever cooked like rockfish, 
like I'm going to say regular rockfish, but they're all regular. They're all very normal rockfish, you know, but the, the smaller rockfish, those are really hard to overcook. Um, they're easy to not overcook. I'll say, um, for whatever reason, they just, they tend to not dry out. So yellow eye rockfish is a little bit different, um, but you have a little bit more grace than something like Pacific halibut. Um, if you've ever overcooked Pacific halibut, like having it overcooked, just like that one extra minute too long is just a total disaster. And it just needs to become fish cakes or something different like that. Um, it almost takes on like a texture that's like overcooked pork chops or something. So um, with yellow eye rockfish, I found that, well, A, I haven't overcooked it yet, um, but B, B, it's like a little bit more like regular rockfish where, like I said, regular rockfish, um, where you don't have to worry so much about it getting overcooked. I've seared it with no issues whatsoever. Um, so don't be afraid to try searing it. Baking's great. Broiling is great. Um, I haven't tried grilling it yet, but if I wanted to do it on a grill pan, actually, that would be my choice. My second choice for doing this recipe is grilled yellow eye on my cast iron grilled pan with this sauce afterward. Like it just goes really nicely with the smoky flavors, like that little bit of char. Um, so yeah, you know, just treat it like a, a fish that you don't have to be too precious with it. Um, it's not quite as fragile as, or fragile or delicate as something like halibut. So um let me grab this fish. It's been about eight minutes. So at least one of these fillets should be done. All right. If you want to switch over to the other camera, Zanana. We're, oh, you already did that. Wonderful. You are on it. All right. This smells ridiculous. Um, between the sweet potatoes smelling really sweet, you know, which I know, like I said, isn't part of this recipe, but that Plus these warm spices just smells so good. Um, let me see if this one is done yet. Mm, not quite, but this one should flake really easily just like that. So I'm gonna say this is done and pull it off the sheet pan. Mm. Really, really crispy, really, really hot too. But yellow eye has a really nice texture to it it almost has like um I don't know if like fibrous is the right word because like, that doesn't sound appealing but it has a sort of like shreddable texture in the actual flakes themselves so it's just like really nice to chew I mean you'll see once you try it if you're adding a box you're adding some of this to your next box like it's just really really delicious and like I don't know. Like I said, it's perfect for a weeknight and you just want to be like a little cozy. So let me put some of these sweet potatoes on here. Um, in the meantime, this is going to go back into the oven just for a few more minutes. Um, so I don't need any more sauce on the fish, but I think that these are going to be perfect with a little bit of this on top. Something like that. Yum. Um, all right. Well, a very early dinner is served. So um, let me take one more bite of this where I actually have some of this sauce on it and I'm not burning the roof of my mouth. Mm. If you want to switch over to the other camera, I'm done chewing more or less. <laughs> so good really nice like depth of spice just from those ground spices that I've had in my pantry for who knows how long um the, especially the smoked paprika really comes through and that in contrast with the fresh herbs is just super super tasty this is why I make the sauce all the time I'm obsessed with it I'll have it on anything um anything but oatmeal basically <laughs> so um, I really hope that you try it after, um, before I close out, we're, we're at an end here. Anyone else have any questions about anything? I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything from you. I guess. That's, not. Yeah, that's it with the question. Right, okay. <laughs> so, um, again, yellow eye is yellow eye rockfish is our current member special exclusive to members. It's in the rockfish family, but it's mild. So 
forget all of your expectations when you hear the word rockfish, whether you love rockfish or you're like meh about rockfish. This is so different. It reminds me more of Pacific halibut or lingcod. Um, I've been using it in place of Pacific halibut. Definitely a fun new species to try, um, you know, if you like whitefish. So um, if you're not a member yet, we have a special offer for you. Um, if you become a member today, um, you can use the code LIVE25 and get $25 off your first amazing box of fish from Wild Alaskan Company and get access to exclu exclusive member specials like this yellow eye rockfish. Um, and it's really easy to sign up. Just go to the Wild Alaskan Company homepage. The link and code is right there in the chat. Um, and yeah, next week, Thanksgiving, join me again. I'll be gearing up for Thanksgiving at my mom's house in Kansas um, with an event that features a few quick 15 minute salmon appetizers. Um, I haven't done any planning whatsoever for what we're having for Thanksgiving. So this is actually going to be me making some of these for my holiday dinner the day before the holiday dinner, but um, it should be a good holiday inspiration for if you're planning on hosting anything or just like snacking festively by yourself at any point in uh, November and December. But I hope to see you there and uh, live wild. Yeah, thank you. Happy, happy fish giving, fish Thanksgiving. Someone <laughs> said something like that. <laughs>